going down? It's your boy Juicy J. My hustle is our hustle, man. That's what you're watching right now. It's going down. Five is Kendrick Lamar, my dude Rambo. Our hustle, yeah. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Hip Hop Report. Uh, as you guys may have or may not have heard, Drake was coming out with some new product. Now, of course, for the net last about six to ten months, Drake has been testing the waters and the temperature of the, the, the audience, of the fans, by leaking, releasing multiple records, sometimes two, three at a time, sometimes two, three per month, uh, which to me, it's, it, it's just, you know, it's him seeing what people say, seeing if something catches on. This is really nothing more than Drake understanding how uh, audiences move, how they react to music, uh, you know, and more or less, uh, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're about to get in a pool and you put your feet in just to kind of test the temperature, literally exactly same, same thing. I think that's what kind of Russ does a real, real good job on too, is just rolling out tons of music all the time consistently. So like that, the fans can decide whatever is going to be a hit, whatever is not. We'll just they'll listen to it once, be like, eh, whatever, and then keep it moving. Now, Drake, of course, isn't really granted that kind of luxury in regards of quality of music or putting music out in general. But what's important is that I think he's smart enough, <coughs> excuse me, woo, to really uh, maneuver through the terrain of releasing music regardless of what's going on in the world. Now, despite... Uh, the criticisms that I've made, even I've made of Drake previously, of him not really addressing any societal issues. Uh, you know, there are specific lines in his new record, Laugh Now, Laugh Now Cry Later, in which he, um, I wouldn't say he addresses social issues, but he relates to what the audience has been going through through his lyrics. So instead of saying, this is my opinion, this is how I feel, he's actually saying, I understand how you feel and I respect where you're where you're at. Now in the video there's tons of uh of cameos from Marshawn Lynch to Odell Beckham um to who else Lil Durk is on the record uh to what I believe is maybe one of his best performances in quite some time in regards to major records but what else would you expect uh coming out with Drake and of course I think Drake always does a great job of reaching back out or reaching down uh, and uplifting other artists that he feels will, well, I mean, who, who knows why he really does it? I mean, ultimately, if he didn't feel like it was a beneficial exchange of 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 of, of audience for respect, which is kind of what what happens, because Drake has the audience, Lil Durk has the respect. So naturally, if if he puts Lil Durk on a pedestal uh, and stand next to his pedestal, it allows. Lil Durk to elevate his platform and now Lil Durk is spoken of in the same breath as Drake even if it's just for a little bit of time and allows him to get that shine off the boy now ugh, why'd I even say that but anyways so the new record Laugh Night Cry Later it also features his uh his child's mother his baby mama if you will um uh, you know, there's just a lot of things going on. I, Kevin Durant is in the video dunking on him. He always does a great job of, you know, and I really do feel uh, previously I had this conversation with Endo 310 out in LA. And it's amazing that despite what you're telling me, he doesn't have an R&B album. Like all his albums are still under hip hop. So, you know, he's gone this long without... He's gone this long without uh, dropping a full R&B thing, which means that he's kept his audience entertained consistently year after year without even like doing a certain thing that people are gonna go fucking crazy for. So to me, once he drops that, that's like him doing everything that he could possibly do. Cause he's never gonna do like the white rapper thing and go and go to like the alternative rock emo lane. You know what I mean? And so to me, I feel like that's kind of where we're at. Like we are ready for this uh, uh, super over, not over hype, under hype maybe, uh, R&B album from Drake. Something he's been telling us he's going to do for a long time. Uh, something he's been teasing his fans with for a long time. And honestly, uh, I almost feel like it was a, a great move. And I don't know how intentional it was, but the idea of, you know, continuing to hit the street talk 
and the, the, the hard hitting records, the trap records, the slappers, whatever. Um, and then allow the people to let you know when they are ready for something like what I do believe we are getting. Now, the name of the album uh, from what I'm reading is Certified Lover Boy, which also leads me to believe that with a title like that, you're only bound to get, I would say, at least 75 to 85 percent R&B based singing melody uh, whisper in notes so 40 can perfect it and make it sound amazing uh type of records and honestly i think it's overdue i think his fans are ready for it and honestly right now with most of the country being locked in uh it's baby making season it's about to start getting chilly out people are not still can't go outside we the summer's pretty much over it, i hate even saying it it hurts my soul but the, the summer is pretty much a wrap uh, and I think people are going into the idea of this kind of vibe where they're indoors, they're chilling, and they want music that they can chill to, you know, and unfortunately, you know, where a lot of people, I think, might be like, oh, I wish I could hear this in the club. I really do feel like uh, Drake records aren't really made for the club. I mean, sometimes they are, but... I think I think generally Drake's sound where he shines through the best is this right here, where it allows him to hit that vibe where you can drive to his records like late night drives with if you're burning something, whatever. But though that's kind of the, the 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 scenery that I feel like Drake paints with a lot of his records, uh, where you where you really you almost have to be in, in deeper thought than just like a regular club record would put you where you're just turning up or drinking or whatever the case may be. So once again, uh, we, we, we do get this new record as promised. Uh, also, make sure you guys check out the Nas and Hit Boy record that was released. It's called Ultra Black and it's, it, it's maybe one of Nas's best beats that he's picked in quite some time. As you guys know, or if you don't know, Nas has a historical historical uh, inability to choose big beats, which honestly I credit to the fact that a lot like J. Cole, they just make different kinds of music. I don't want to overcrowd the beat. I don't want to have a thousand sounds and a thousand lasers happening everywhere. I want you to focus on my voice and what I'm telling you. So I'm not going to give you the luxury of being distracted and diverted from my message because you're focused on this banger slap beat. So with that being said, Drake, Laugh Now, Cry Later, brand new record out featuring Chicago's Lil Durk and a tons of features and tons of cameos. Uh, and to, hopefully what will lead to the, uh, the, the long overdue, in my opinion, Drake R&B album. And, you know, will probably lead to further overpopulation. 